Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we're on the website of Armati Auctions based in the UK. And we're going to have a look at their latest auction. This is an affordable auction which is ending on the 30th of November, which actually happens to be tomorrow. Um, so this is the lower tier auction. So this is stuff that's kind of maybe tradey, needs to be kind of repaired or kind of the provenance is a bit shaky that kind of stuff um in this auction actually i've had a brief overview it is quite tradey this one so we're really going to kind of blast through it pretty quickly and we're going to kind of skip over a few things but i will put a link in the description as always and i kind of advise you to kind of check it out in your own time and look in more detail because you never know there are a few interesting things here and there uh buyers premium for this uh sale is 22 percent, so that's what you pay uh, percentage of the final hammer price on top uh, as I said this is a UK based auction so if you're outside of the UK then check, check all the terms and conditions all the shipping and any site stuff that might uh, kind of apply export import all of that kind of fun uh, jazz um, so uh, without further ado let's kind of just get on with it like I said we're going to speed through probably look at quite a few of the cellos because they're a bit more interesting in the violins than the violins in this auction so we've got a cello labelled M. Uh, Quattro, there, current bid £600, I think all of the lots start at kind of 10 to 20 in this sale, um, kind of looks in the style of uh, kind of French stuff, we've obviously got the 360 viewer here on the Amati auctions which can be useful, and the, uh, the good old condition report so we can see some closed cracks here, closed crack on the back there, some post uh, crack on the back so that's quite unfortunate there and yeah let's uh, carry on so we've got a cello labelled Carlo Tononi there 1300 definitely looks like it has some age we won't look at all of the 360s or all of the uh, condition reports but it's quite interesting uh, big soundpost crack on the front and on the uh, back it looks like there so that's pretty pretty substantial but still has £1,300 bid that's quite uh, interesting there cello unlabeled this looks fairly kind of trade-ish I would think 275 the current bid well that's got a lot of repairs on the front but uh, Nothing on the back, so that's a bonus over the other ones. Cello unlabeled, current bid 400. It looks a little bit uh, rough in places. Cello unlabeled, 475, current bid. Looks like a bit of a nasty crack uh, on the top there. It's coming down here that looks fairly kind of modern from the varnish yeah big open crack there that's a nasty one that's going to be expensive so I mean a lot of things to be repaired in this auction um, here is a cello labelled Presenda £1200 the uh, current bid looks in a bit better condition that's not too bad on the sides a few things here and there Always best to look at these things in person as well if you can. Cello labelled supplied by W. Thompson. Current bid 350. Looks fairly normal. Cello unlabeled there. 700 the current bid. It's again fairly looks quite modern. Cello unlabeled, there's actually quite a few cellos here. It's auction 210. Let's have a quick look at the uh, condition report. A few cracks on the top, some open ones at the side. Half size cello, this looks uh, slightly interesting. £40 bid on that. Cello, oh, there's uh, this Romanian cello here, we can just skip over that. Cello unlabeled, interesting shape to this one, 180, the current bid. No 
no labels or anything. Another cello, oh no, it's a cello labelled Matthias Heinecke. A lot more uh, cellos than I thought there were. We'll spend most of the time on cellos, I think, today, and uh, probably whiz through the violins. Cause from what I saw, I think the violins were not too exciting. Cello unlabelled. 325, that looks pretty standard kind of stuff. Another cello unlabeled, 375. It's got the uh, mechanical tuners installed. Yamaha silent cello there, 350 on that. This is probably the most interesting cello, I think, in the in this auction, although this three quarters is quite nice. Um, a cello labeled Robert A. Stanley, violin and bow maker, Manchester, 1920. 600 is the current bid. This has a bit of a uh, bit of charm, a bit of something about it, I think, more than the other cellos in this auction. A few closed cracks there. Could be worse. Needs a bit of restoration for sure. Uh, cello unlabeled. This looks fairly modern from the things. Yeah, that I suspect that is not too old. 800 on that, but the condition at least looks fairly decent. This looks interesting from the front three quarter, indistinctly labelled, and it's fairly kind of generic. I don't, I don't know. It's not too bad for a three quarter. Let's have a look. Forty is the bid. A few cracks at the bottom. That's not too bad. Maybe for a kind of child or something. It's simple, but has some charm. And then we've got this half size cello. interesting back okay so I think that's us done with cellos now uh, not sure if there's any violas in this auction maybe they are uh, let's have a look at this violin labelled Andres Guarnerius this is very kind of uninspiring uh, to be honest let's have a look at this violin violin labelled William Glenister 650 uh, on that, that looks like a, an okay instrument. Scroll a little bit uh, funky. Looks in okay condition. 23 Beak Street, London, 1921. Well, it's not too bad. Violin labelled, Vincenzo Giorgio. I think we can go past that. Violin unlabeled. Let's have a look at that. 550 on this one. Mm, quite a nice back. Interesting graft on that. Slightly curious. Let's have a quick look at the the uh, spinning and see. It's fairly nice kind of wood to it. A few things that look a little bit uh, off with the uh, F holes there. But uh, interesting. Um, violin labelled Reinhold Geipel and Son. This is fairly standard, so let me skip that. Uh, violin labelled Richard Weichold Paulus. Let's see, that looks really horridly attacked from the varnish point of view. So let's move on from that. That's a violin unlabeled, that looks fairly standard. Uh, violin labelled Amati Mongenot. Let's have a look at this one. It's actually looks interesting enough. What's the length of back here? 355. A few closed cracks. Let's have a quick look at the 360. Interesting enough. I think we can go past this three quarter. Violin Heinrich Hermann. It looks very standard. This looks very standard, kind of tradey violin. This I'm pretty sure is another trade violin, one in unlabeled. Let's, I'm sure this is a mistake, but let's have a look at this violin labeled Joseph Klotz, just so we're doing a bit of a cross section. Yeah, very kind of standard stuff here. Like some of these things, it's a bit in a hit or miss. You can click on it, it might be really interesting, it might be 
pretty bad ordinarily I'd probably look through absolutely everything uh, and double check but I've had a quick look and I think it's uh, it's safe to just randomly click on anything really um, it's an interesting crackleture on this particular uh, instrument it's quite uh, curious interesting kind of turns on the scroll there um, yeah this is actually probably one of the more interesting violins uh, so far some really bad uh, cracks on the front though so that needs a good uh, good bit of repair yeah that's uh, it's got some interesting bits about it that uh, violin uh, Strad labeled violin violin unlabeled Strad again, vinyl labelled Alan R. Payne. Let's have a look at this. Glasgow looks a little bit odd. Vinyl labelled Jean Strybig, vinyl labelled Emile Francais, other Stein the label there, vinyl unlabelled. Let's have a look at this one. Violin unlabeled again, another copy of Guarnerius. Most of these are fairly tradey, to be honest. I wouldn't expect anything super, super exciting. A few kind of interesting things here. Um, definitely, if you're a kind of repair or a store and you want to do a bit of practice, there's some good stuff, I think. But I mean, if we click on any of these, I think they're going to be fairly generic. Yeah, just fairly standard trade instruments another kind of Steiner here let's have a look at this violin unlabeled it's quite uh, narrow it's one of the classic ones with a lion's head kind of trade violin there violin unlabeled a few more of these are all fairly standard let's have a look at this if it's labeled Wolf Brothers with a kind of Magini style purfling slightly odd shape and f holes 80 current bid on that one Let's see violin dulcis and fortis probably low grade french violin unlabeled this is probably another kind of this is a kind of lower tier uh, german violin i'm pretty pretty sure i mean think kind of violins like this i think are kind of probably okay for like a budget um baroque setup or something you could almost just just put gut strings on in a baroque bridge or something and as long as uh, kind of some of the measurements and things are okay you could probably get away with it. it has that kind of feel about it some of these kind of older but very kind of low grade german uh violins have a look at this violin labeled raphael bosi raphael bosi even well, that's like quite a crazy back. That looks very much like a kind of modern Chinese instrument with that uh, kind of choice of uh, um, wood there and just the general purfling and things like that. I would assume that that is probably a Chinese violin, but I could be and am often wrong. So uh, make of it what you will. This looks like another kind of one of these kind of budgety trade violins not as interesting as the other one more kind of unlabeled violins here these are all i'm pretty sure quite tradey let's have a quick look at this one violin made by j kill uh, yeah i mean it's possibly believable these are some pretty interesting f holes there quite long and a bit uneven so j kill violin there Let's have a look at this violin labelled Gabriel uh, Machiniera or something like that. Looks in fairly good condition. It says fine condition, yep, there you go. 210 on that. Could be an okay violin, it's got some charm to it. Uh, this one I think is potentially interesting. Violin labelled Jacob Rauch. Pretty kind of. Uh, 
dark I think that is probably its original varnish there looks like it has a neck graft so big amount of repairs on that but this is uh, probably one of the better items I think in that uh, in this auction so far I'm sure we've missed a few kind of ones that I didn't click on but uh, at the end of the day there are quite a lot here violin labeled Joseph Guarnerius well it looks like a guarneri ish style uh, instrument once again looks like this kind of 19th century trade better kind of quality trade but still that 240 on that violin unlabeled let's have a look at this one yeah, that's interesting enough there 50 on that few more just fairly similar stuff a lot of instruments in this auction so more kind of tradey things here oh let's have a look at this because people are bidding up on this a violin labeled Sylvester and at Mocatel does have that kind of French look about it interesting turns actually on the on the scroll there it's curious let's uh see what the measurements are here 359 it's fairly large that's quite uh, a French trait um, of that kind of period uh, interesting enough fairly fairly nice let's have a look at this violin labeled Emmanuel Whitmarsh 1906 okay 210 on that Another few Strad labels here. Thompson, Luigi Fabris. One in unlabeled. Trying to look for anything that looks a little bit different or interesting. Let's have a look at this. Violin labeled Michael Lindsay. Wow, that's had some horrific uh, repair work done on that. So, there are signs that this could have actually been an okay instrument in a kind of slightly rougher way but my god the uh, repair work on that that is absolutely that is diabolical really really horrid uh, can we zoom in a bit yeah look at that that is absolutely why would you even do that 40 pounds a current bid I uh, wouldn't even put four pounds on it to be honest uh, this looks quite interesting violin unlabeled looks a bit like it might have been re-varnished or something 130 is the current bid yes yeah, looks a bit re-varnished to me but cheap patch to the side I think that could have been an okay instrument but it looks like it's been fiddled about with but once again could be wrong let's have a look made stone there German violin lots of other kind of ones Violin labelled Viome Paris. 50 is the current bid. Yeah, straight up trade violin there. Violin labelled Emmanuel Barbarian. Um, another, let's have a look at this. Uh, Viome, people like this. 950 uh, bid on this one. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. So it looks quite nice varnish and things on that let's have a look at the uh, things yeah not too bad on that and the measurements 360 interesting that would be an interesting violin to look at in person I think definitely one of the better uh, lots for sure um, let's have a look these next two actually are quite interesting a violin labelled Fato de Patrick Lebrot, 210. Okay, there's quite a, it's quite a tidy looking instrument. It's quite neat. The workmanship on that. It's in probably fine condition. So 210 at the moment on that. If it's a decent enough violin, that's kind of interesting. It's a curious one here. Violin labelled Corrado Gritty Candy, in Genoa. 800 the current bid on that I quite like the varnish colour on this it's kind of slightly uh, kind of 
strong, uh, almost fluorescent kind of to it. A few more kind of standards like this. It's a bit of a curious one. This looks really familiar to me. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure I've seen this violin somewhere before. It looks quite amateur work, but at least it's something different. This looks very much like a kind of German type uh, instrument. Kind of painted uh, purfling on that. 70. It's the current bid. Let's have a look at this kind of instrument. I think not the uh, finest uh, quality. Um, Paul Bailey labelled there. Still got quite a few pages to go. Let's see if we can find anything else interesting here. Fine and unlabeled. Let's have a look at this one here. Have a look at the back on that. Yep, yeah, 80. Not too exciting. Have a look at this one here. It's got. 325 on it. Someone's interested in it. Finally labelled A. McCallum, Glasgow. Could be. It looks the interesting F hole placement and uh, corner work, so it's probably amateur. Amateur work there. Violin unlabeled. It's 40 on that. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, it looks like your standard kind of thing. Nothing too crazy there. Well, this is a curious one, isn't it? Violin labeled Walter McCarthy, Mansfield, 1920. 90 on that. Well, I mean, I think uh, we probably have to believe the. Uh, label on that it's uh, definitely an interesting one uh, violin labelled Voigt Companion Skylark brand so that's a Chinese instrument there let's have a look at this one unlabeled 110 ok this doesn't look too dissimilar to I think that other one labelled uh, Vioma earlier that was going for like 900 if my memory serves me doesn't look too dissimilar um, violin unlabeled let's have a look at this one that has been well and truly uh, messed around with someone has had a good bit of fun uh, on the uh, F holes there let's have a look a few more kind of Standardy things. This one's a bit bizarre. Violin labelled J. R. Monk Merton in Surrey. Once again, this looks like uh, amateur work. Looking at the look at the arching here and the F hole placement. It's quite very low, uh, but in general, pretty odd. Fifty current bid on that. Uh, let's have a look at this one. A violin branded B. R. Italy. Okay, 90 on this one so far. Just looks a bit curious. Violin labelled Neuner and Hornsteiner. Let's have a look. Just looks pretty generic there. Uh, violin labelled Longman and Broderick. Um, let's have a look at this Galliano labelled uh, violin, why not? Fairly standard. A few more kind of normal things here. This one's quite curious. Violin unlabeled. £10 current bid on that. This, I think, is another example of a good instrument which would be good for a really like 
really bare bones baroque kind of thing because it just has that look to it it's got a few cracks and things maybe as a project for someone for your workshop if you want a little kind of mock baroque uh, violin as I say I think that's got charm I quite like that I mean it's £10 so it's probably not going to go up to crazy money it's probably going to like 40 or 50 or something like that so that's almost doable oh there are some violas I miss that looks, let's have a look at the violas because there aren't that many usually this looks like a very generic uh, trade viola so nothing to see there viola unlabeled this one looks a bit bonkers yeah that's definitely almost certainly enthusiastic, enthusiastic amateur uh, work there another viola with the strad label this is yeah pretty nasty kind of trade uh, viola let's have a look at uh, this one here viola labeled Stradivari pretty standard and viola labeled hand built in Mittenwald this looks like a kind of tradey very low grade trade another viola here yeah and more tradey type viola there and let's have a look quarter size viola beer and sun 30 on that saying based on the tertis so in memory of uh, Lionel Tertis, interesting. Another viola, unlabeled. So, looks interesting. Shiny varnish there. Viola labeled Zhang's Workshop, Beijing 2000. Okay, probably Chinese trade uh, viola there, but I mean it might be perfectly good. Viola labelled Giuseppe Pelicani. Twelve hundred on that. That's interesting. Let's have a look at the uh, fine condition. Four one nine. It's the. Uh, it's a good length for a modern player. I'm not personally convinced there. No. Convinced. Uh, Cellobo Stick Branded Morizon. Cellobo Victor Fatigue. Marco Raposo. Xi Chambao. Silver Mounted Cellobo. Branded Stick Branded Chano. Silver Mounted Fanabo Null. Unbranded Chelly Stick. Uh, silver Mounted Carbon Fiber Bow. Branded B. Roland. Interesting. I'm branded silver mounted bow, nickel mounted, silver mounted, a few other bows here, German bow, violin bow stick, nickel mounted violin bow, silver mounted violin bow, violin bow branded taut. Let's just have a look at this one because it has the interesting kind of harp thing on it. It's got the pearl lyre, £40 bid on that. Or bows here. Not seeing anything super. Uh, this is interesting. I was going to say this I210. Um, interesting. This looks uh, like um, like Amaret, like Snakewood, I think. Um, it's interesting. Some random bows. What else do you have? More lots of bows here. We won't go into details of that. Uh, some books. Fulton collection, interesting. Morassi. It's Batman's uh, book. That's a good old copy of uh, De Geigen and Lautenmarker. Dictionary of Violin and Bowmakers, John Dilworth, that's pretty good. 
some cases here, bow cases, good old hill case there, a few more cases, case branded Bainin Fushi there, more Bainin Fushi cases, a gorge case, these are always popular, that will go for good money, cello case, Gawa, more cello cases, well that's it basically, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll put a link in the description, check it out for yourself, there are a few interesting things here and there, um, a couple of cellos I think are interesting, a couple of violins, some other bits, um, yeah, I think you probably would have to spend a bit of time having a look through this auction and see if you can find something interesting, um, there's been other affordable auctions that I think were better personally, but uh, if you've got a bit of time, the link's in the description and uh, just check it out and see for yourself, We'd, I just wanted to go over it pretty quickly because I, I thought that it wasn't kind of as kind of uh, interesting as some of the other ones so definitely kind of uh, take your time and have a look at it yourself so thanks a lot for watching as always and i'll uh, catch you next time bye many thanks for tuning in to the musical instrument investigator i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then please like uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon